Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Adam here. Uh, today we are going to attempt to launch, launch a pr unmanned probe to the MUN. I have made some changes to my relay system. I've tried to upgrade it a little bit. So hopefully we'll have a little bit more luck with it. And hold on here, i got to adjust something. Alright, so hopefully we'll have more luck with it. Um, I just kind of redesigned my satellites. I'll show you, I, I, and I scanned all three planets. I did that off camera because I've already done it. Um, the ScanSat system works really good. I, I really like the scan system that they have. Uh, it's, it's better than the ISA MapSat by far. So this is a standard launcher. Uh, unfortunately, the fairing's not quite big enough, so it's kind of uh, poking out just a little bit on the sides there, but hopefully that won't matter. I don't think it's going to cause it to explode or anything silly like that. So this is my standard uh, kind of light launcher for satellites and the like. So I this thing's been reasonably well uh, tested at this point. So assuming nothing horrific happens, I'll probably just meet you up in orbit. Although I don't know if actually. We'll go through the launch, because I don't know if I've showed this whole thing operate since it's been upgraded. I do like this uh, launcher quite a bit now. I don't know, it has a, a fairly realistic looking uh, look to it. I also installed the Distant Objects mod. I'm trying to see if I can... Uh, MechJeb's not allowing the throttle up right now. I'm trying to see if I can see any of them. It's a little hard to tell when all the stars are up, but basically it allows... Uh, it allows me to see all the planets and whatnot. I had to disable part of it that lets you see your ship, so then uh, it doesn't load physics or anything, but it does load the model so that it reflects light and stuff. I had to disable that part of it because it was basically just breaking uh, ships. They would just explode for whatever reason when they were re-entering the atmosphere. So I had to get rid of that. Um, that that's kind of too bad, but... Well, it's easier to see them at dusk because there's not all these extra little things, but um, we'll probably see some out on the way. Well, there's the Mun. Some of them are right. I think that that's probably one right there. Oh, that's Jewel, I'm pretty sure, right there. So it just actually adds them to the sky so you can see them. Like, you know, it kind of makes sense because on Earth we can see those kind of things um, from the surface. And I like to be able to actually see them from some sort of distance. So... It's a pretty cool mod, but let's start our gravity turn a little more aggressively now, since we've got some good altitude going. Easy does it. Fortunately, launching in the dark again. Seems to happen a lot. Whatever. So we'll get the fairing off here in a second. You probably won't be able to see much of anything, though. I'm thinking it's going to be too dark to see too much. It looks really cool when everything's all lined up. Um, I'm trying to install the, the Planet Factory, but memory is just real tight for me. There we go. So that looked like a pretty successful separation. So this probe, uh, it's basically based on my new satellite chassis. It has the same kind of battery systems and stuff. It doesn't have quite as much fuel. Actually, I think it has the same amount of fuel. Let's go ahead and deploy... Where's the antenna? I don't think that's actually set to an action group. That could be a problem. That's a thermometer. Where are you, antenna? I can't see you. Okay, the antenna did deploy. Okay. Just wanted to make sure, because don't need this thing going uh, dark on me. I like these... Uh, this is from a pack I saw, the Isis pack. I've been kind of deleting some parts that I know I'm not going to use from all the packs, including now basic squad parts to clear more memory. Um, like extra solar panels, lights, and stuff that I just know I'm not going to need two fuel tanks that are kind of the same size, and a lot of the squad ones are kind of ugly. So I've been working on deleting parts. Uh, that way I can try to free up a little bit more memory. My Apple apps just got really high. I wasn't paying any attention there. How much fuel did I just waste? Well, I was yapping away there. So we still have two thousand. That's more than enough to do what we need to do, but that was unfortunate. But, um, as I was saying, um, try to get rid of some of those extra parts. I don't think I'm going to be able to get enough space freed up for the, um, planet factory, which, there's really only one planet I wanted out of that anyway. I don't like most of the planets too much, but apparently you can't just install 
um, centaur, the gas giant and its moons. You can't just pick one planet and install it. You have to get like inaccessible and whatever the other ones are called. And I could do without those ones just because they're not as interesting. I have a thing for gas giants with moons. It would have been kind of cool to have that, but apparently the uh, Planet Factory CE Creator Edition is gonna it's in development, so maybe I'll be able to add something worthwhile with that. But for now, we haven't even left the the carbon the you know the carbon system, so not gonna worry too much about it. So this has every instrument I have, except it does not have a materials bay. Just because it was going to be hard to fit that on a probe, I think I'm going to save that for a manned mission. Um, but I wanted to get some more science unlocked before we worried too much about a manned mission. I'm hoping I'll be able to use both of these thermometers to gather a little bit of extra data, transmit it before we leave. We should have a good... Uh, I can show now that we're in orbit. Uh, I've redesigned my comm network. I've got my satellite set up pretty well around all three bodies here. There's a, cur a Keythane satellite and a ScanSat in with a low-resolution sensor around both the MUN the, uh, and MinMIS and Kerbin, actually. So hopefully that'll do for now. I don't have any of the more advanced devices, so that's about as good as we could do. So let's go ahead and kind of close to being able to get a, a good burn going here. Let's see what we can get for an encounter. I should really pull this up so I have some idea of our Delta V situation. Alright, close encounter is all the way over there. Because we're at a higher altitude, it kind of threw things into chaos here a little bit. So that's saying I'm practically there. Let's burn a little bit more, a little too much maybe. What do we got there? That's all Kerbin. I don't care about Kerbin. Why is it not telling me about my encounter with the MUN? All I want to know. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So let's execute that. Wasted Delta V, but we have Delta V to burn. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, I'm hoping power is not going to become too much of a problem. I have a good amount of batteries on this, so it shouldn't. I only have these fixed solar panels on here because this probe is really meant to be down there long term. So it doesn't particularly matter if it's able to track the sun and it saved a little bit of space. So hopefully that will be good enough. I'm hoping to get at least some of the breaking out of this stage too, but yeah, we'll get some out of it. This stage has 1,200 left and we're only going to use about 700, so we should have probably enough to pretty much get into orbit. Unfortunately, I don't have the landing um, guidance thingy, so we're going to have to manually do the landing. So, oh, here we can see, uh, I think that's probably Eve. That's definitely Jewel. Don't know where, that might be Moho, I don't know. So, this will probably lose contact part of the way across, but it doesn't really matter because we should regain communications once we get into orbit of the MUN. If my network works correctly, which it did for all my launching, so I don't see why it wouldn't for for this. So you can get a better look at this probe here. I'll probably end up launching a bunch of these to different craters and parts of the moon. Fortunately, I do not have the biome scanner for my um, satellites yet, so kind of don't know exactly where the biomes are, and I'm not going to just go look that up. So we'll have to make do with what we got. But let's get our transfer done. So you can see all those crazy lines going on. Alright, and maybe this antenna has the range. It looks like we're going to stay in in range, yeah. That's cool. So we can transfer out here with this little antenna. Getting used to, like, I have a bunch of different antennas installed, so... I'm trying to get used to how they all work. Remote tech works a lot better than it used to as well. But it's definitely still a learning curve for stuff. So I'm going to try to, we'll get our orbit circularized or whatever it ended up being. Uh, it looks like 336 uh, kilometers there. And then we'll get into a lower orbit. Probably just going to land in the big crater, but it is important that I land on the day side so we can get some readings and transmit them back before I run out of battery power. So we'll kind of judge that when we get there. The mud, I think, turns that way. So that crater has just come up in the morning. 
So I think that crater will probably be good. Yeah, it is good. I think it is turning that way. So yeah, we'll probably start landing that crater. I'm sure that's one of the biomes. Let's see if we can, when we get out of time warp, if we can get a temperature reading here. I need some science. I can't do a scan right now. What about, what about you? Magnetometer thingy. No valuable information. Let's retract that for the landing, even though I don't think it particularly matters, but I wonder if that's throwing off the balance of the craft. It doesn't really seem to be, but. Are we in orbit? We're in orbit. Like, I don't really care about the last little meters there. So let's go ahead and get down to like, say like, mm, let's say 15,000. And we'll just do it right in, at the, why is it doing it at periaps? Whatever. I don't care. We're gonna have to change our inclination. Actually, let's, let's work on the inclination first. Where's our descending node? So you'd probably be right about here. Let's go ahead and tip down pretty far. Not sure that's going to even be far enough like that, but it will as the MUN rotates, I suppose. So let's execute that. Come on. I didn't put any RCS on this thing because it's not really needed for this kind of stuff too much, although it would be handy right now. It's usually not too much of an issue. So, it, I mean, if we miss that, we haven't done any science from the surface of the mud, so it's not critical, but it would be kind of nice to hit that crater. It's just a matter of how much fuel we have. All right, what are you doing here? We are having some issues getting lined up here for some reason. Come on. I'm going to do a time warp freeze just to get this under control. I have no idea what its problem was. It was just rotating around a, an axis in a stupid fashion. So we'll do a couple real low orbits because we haven't even orbited the Mun yet. Actually, this is the first craft that's actually orbited. We did a flyby with a manned ship, but we have not done any actual low orbit stuff so we should be able to get some more science out of some of this and if this craft works here it should work even better on mid -miss, so probably sending some out that away too what do you have to say mystery goo yeah yeah we'll be in orbit again I'm not gonna waste my goo containers out here in space I don't have a lab or any way to recover them so call that good I'm sure it's close enough and it is so change our periaps and we will do that right now pretty much let's just do it come on swing around this this probe body doesn't have a lot of torque so it's not exactly the easiest getting some of this maneuver stuff done with this but Seems like we're in pretty good shape here. That sucks because I'm still really limited in my fuel tank selection. Even with the mods that I have, I don't have any... There's a really small fuel tank. I forgot what they call it. I like to use that for probes, but... I had to go with the one meter parts, which... Annoys me slightly. Good enough. Don't... Let's not get crazy here, Megjeb. Megjeb doesn't do so well if it doesn't have enough torque or RCS. So this fuel tank is going to actually be able to deorbit us, so we won't be leaving junk in space. That's good. I'm just looking here. We have 212 left. We're going to use so about 100 left, so we should easily be able to deorbit the big fuel tank and then go in on the finer stuff. Maybe we'll be able to return this probe back to Kerbin. It doesn't have a heat shield, though. I didn't really have enough confidence to, uh, to try that, so I guess that's not going to work out. Well, maybe we can hop it over to another biome. We'll see how it goes. Getting a little ahead of myself, because definitely have, we have not landed yet, and I have not manually landed in a while. The Whatever video in, in my uh, 
in my previous sandbox mode where I visited the MUD for the first time. That was the last time I'd done a manual landing. I just don't do them often when I have Mech Jeb because I kind of like to do other stuff a lot of the time and not pay too much attention, when I, especially if I'm building stuff. I just, you know, if you're sending out a bunch of rockets that are very similar, it's not really much fun to manually do that. So, well, we're in a circular orbit, so remove all the nodes just to make sure. Let's go ahead and lock that off so it stops tumbling quite so much. What do you have to say, thermometer? Oh, God, you do have something to say, but we are not going to be able to return that to Kerbin. So we're going to be back. Can you log it again? Ah, oh, now we have to return it, though, to get anything out of it. Well, what about... It's dark again, hard to see. That thing only works on the surface. What about you, my magnetometer thingy? Oh, yeah, beam that stuff back. And we will retract it again. And I think that's pretty much all the instruments I'm going to be wanting to use from up here. Because the only other instrument I really have is this thing, and that only works on the surface. And then the thermometer and the goo stuff. So, let us figure out where we're going to land. Yeah, the MUN probably needs to come around a little bit. Although, that little trench area might be kind of interesting. What else is under our path? I do want to be towards this side, I think, so I get the most daylight. Let's do another plane adjustment here. I'm trying to set up a maneuver, please. Are you kidding me? Add maneuver. Thank you. Um, so what do we need to do to get into that? We need to burn the other way. Oh god, that's going a little crazy here. I don't want that. Oh god. So the mud's rotating slightly too, so we need to account for that. That seems doable. We'll be coming in real low. I don't know about that so much. Let's actually get just a little more altitude. I know it would be more efficient to do it that way probably, but I don't necessarily feel that good about Actually executing that. Oh well, we'll try it. What's the worst thing that could happen? Let's go ahead and execute our node. How far is the node? Ten to, I don't know, this thing's going to turn around quick enough. We might overshoot, because this is not going to turn around quick enough. Where are you even turning? That doesn't look right, but I'll trust you. Maneuver node. Okay, that yeah, that's probably gonna be pretty, pretty much on. I'll do additional correcting once we actually are just using the small ship, cause it'll be good enough. This thing might not deorbit all the way. It probably will. Come on, man! You're just spinning like a freaking top. You're gonna be like way overshot this thing. Maybe putting RCS on next time would be a good idea. Alrighty. A full minute late on our burn, but it'll do. Uh, maybe it'll do. What the hell happened? That's a crazy noise. Yeah, being a minute late may have caused some issues here, but... Eh, we can fix it. Actually, it doesn't look too shabby, actually, does it? Still. Let's go ahead and burn out that way just a hair. Ooh, we're gonna be coming in low. Let's do that doesn't take a lot of delta v to get that done and then we can just slow our momentum down. I just want to make sure I don't hit the rim of the crater is what I'm kind of concerned about. I'm going to be turning over to the terminus here pretty soon. Pretty soon. I do have a little ground radar thingy. Like it's just a laser actually. It's not even 
not even actually a, a radar, but hopefully that will help a little. We don't need you. And I definitely don't think we need that. We need surface info. And I would like to turn on that little laser, which I can't see because it's dark, of course. I think that's it. That is it. Light on. Are you on? You are on, I think. So, probably do want some smart SAS going here. Get some attitude control out of this at least. And let's check where we are on the map. Long way to go. I don't like time warping too much here, but I want to get over to the light side so I can at least see what the heck's going on. Well, our relays are working. That's good. Well, this is pretty. Definitely pretty. So once we get over to the rim of the crater, I'm going to really burn because we have more than enough Delta V to get this landing done. So I think what we'll do is try to get a view where I can get a maneuver node set up, which I guess we're not going to be setting up in maneuver node because it doesn't seem to want to let me. Now, is that actually going to clear? <sighs> That's real close. That is scary close, but it looks like it's going to clear. We're not getting any solar energy right now, but fortunately I put a lot of batteries on this because I figured that might be a problem. That looks badass. Too dark to really take that screenshot, but I, I'm going to anyway. Can't quite see the craft, but... So let's get our gears deployed so I don't forget be optimistic. These are from the Asus pack or whatever, Isis pack as well. I think they're kind of cool. So I think that late I had a problem where if I put that laser here it would just hit the foot. They're at the exact same uh, angle so it made it a little bit challenging. Is this our crater coming up? No it is not. Our crater is still a little distance away. Let's see if we can gather some science I suppose while we're up here. Where's my thermometer? Yeah, got nothing. We got nothing. Alright, so we've cleared the rim of the crater pretty much here now. Ugh, that is skippy. Okay, there we go. So once we get over the very edge of this, we should have a, a lot more uh, ground to make up. See, our true altitude right now is kind of scary low. But, with the help of our friend Mech Jeb, we're going to slow it down. We have a lot more altitude to work with in a second here once we get over this. Let's see, we're picking up altitude again. Because we made it over the wall. So, let's see what we're, we're actually accomplishing here. I don't want to thrust too much. Well, there's kind of like a mountain in the middle. It looks like, yeah, it's a little higher, so if we land, like, right in there, I'd be pretty happy, like. Try to bleed off this velocity here. And... Let's call that good. And... Wait until we start facing the ground just a little bit more for the next part of our burn. Like I said, I haven't landed manually in a while, so I'm a little nervous, but... It's starting to thrust just a little bit, burn off some of this. Don't want to give it too much. Because I don't want to end up falling short of kind of where I'm planning to land. Then again, I also don't want to go in at some crazy speed. more now. I'm liking this landing zone. Actually, call that good. Alright, now hopefully we will be able to keep up with the prograde marker as that continues to change. I'm hoping Mech Jeb will keep us facing kind of in the direction we want to be. Definitely need to slow down a little bit more here though. Get all 
lot more. In fact, let's just turn it off for a second because we're kind of going the wrong way. Oh god, too much. I really need to kill that velocity, the horizontal velocity. Let's get a little altitude. Oh, <laughs> that's really helpful, Mike Jeb. Thanks. Going over to manual controls here. Megjeb is not doing me any favors. Come on, lock off. Kind of be quiet because I'm focusing. <laughs> a little hard landing, a little bit of a flip, but everything seems intact. That was a little bit more of a landing than I had intended. Let's see if we can get the gear to flip us back. I don't know. The, oh, I don't. The animation broke. That was interesting. Turn off the uh, SAS so that it won't be fighting against things. Oh, and my engine. My engine sticks out a little bit. Oh well, we landed. We made it. And one of our panels is getting sunlight, so we can start doing some science. Cool. Let's so, uh, just take a look at where we've actually landed here and get a, a shot if we can. This is actually a pretty cool spot. I like that mountain over there quite a lot. So, goo container. Reveal the Mun's mysteries. Now, we're not going to be able to get this back because I don't have a heat shield. I might almost have enough Delta V to make it back, but there's no heat shield. So this thing's just going to end up burning up. Um... So really, we have to just transmit it back. It's the only option. How are we doing for power? We don't need most of this crap right now. Let's get rid of some of this extra stuff. This thing's not leaving. And turn that off just because we don't need it. Do our little scanny scan. So we're getting a good amount of science back from this mission. I'm going to go ahead and save just because, like I said, my game's been crashing, so... I don't want something unfortunate to happen and me lose all my data that I'm gathering. When we get the manned mission out here, we'll be able to get a lot more science. Hmm, well, it's still worth transmitting. Even if it isn't the most ever science. This was also partially just a test to make sure my relay network was capable of, of dealing with this, and it seems to be doing just fine. So, yeah. Let's actually see how that relay is working. So it's beaming up to a satellite that's right up there. Actually, yeah, it's beaming out to one of my relays and then going back to Kerbin. That's pretty cool. I, I love remote tech. I think it's like the single greatest mod for uh, Kerbal in my opinion. It's I can't imagine playing this game without it, honestly. So what, what biome are we in here, did it say? Let's just log it again even though it doesn't matter. The East Crater. Okay. So what else is around here? Maybe we could try hopping out of the crater and hitting over, heading over there. I have a decent amount of fuel left. Seems like a shame to just leave it at this. Because I could get a little bit more out of this thing. And if we crash it after this, who really cares? I think this thing has a collision detector, so I'm going to go ahead and retract that just to make sure it doesn't well, collide. Alright, so let's turn stuff on. How are we looking? I do want my Delta V and my surface info back up. Let's kind of keep track of that. And I think we want to go north, so. Come on, swing it over. Don't want to pick up too much altitude, because any altitude we pick up is just stuff we have to burn off again. this is gonna work out but we shall see oh god for some reason I'm having a hell of a time steering this thing I'll stop and take a look at what we've done here not enough get out of this crater and that's probably another biome over there I assume Swing this bad boy around. Hmm. 
and I don't think it's going to be going anywhere else after this, so... <laughs> this is pretty much its last journey, so if it crashes, it crashes. If it doesn't, we can probably get another, like, 60 science out of this. Unfortunately, we won't have goo containers, but we will be able to use some of the other instruments again. I'm weary about time warping too much here, so we'll just get to... I don't know, right about... There. Oh, actually, let's do a little more. There. Just to make sure that we are officially out of the crater. Let's start killing our velocity again. That's a little more engine than I wanted. Maybe it's not. We're coming in pretty hot. We are coming in real hot. Find controls, save me. Alright, that's not too hot actually. Might be okay. It's our altitude. Ooh, getting kind of low. Getting kind of low. Let's cut engines for just a minute. I kind of want to put both my hands on the keyboard here when it gets like this, because... Come on, fall, you piece of garbage! But don't fall too fast! I keep getting confused. It's actually not confusing, but apparently it is confusing enough to me. This is going to be a better landing than the other one. Cut, 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 cut. Why did you not cut? Still bouncy, but not too bad. Okay, let's see if we can gather any more information. And scanny scan. I like that instrument. Zap. <laughs> oh, good. That's a decent amount. And we'll beam that back. So this is the Highlands, apparently. Go ahead and log that. And there you go. And our goo containers are both spent, I believe, so that's pretty much that. Not any instruments I'm missing. No, we still don't have any more. So, that went pretty well, honestly. This thing can just sit here on the surface now, I suppose. I should probably reclassify it as debris, but I think it's still going to show up, unfortunately, in uh, in my uh, communications things, because it has an antenna. It's kind of annoying that everything that has an antenna shows up there. I don't think there's a way to remove it if you don't want... It, but it will just be another signal relay, I guess, down here on the surface. Probably be able to relay si signals a little bit off of it, at least. But uh, that was pretty successful. I'll probably send a few more of these off-screen here, just to gather more information. Um, in fact, you know, I'd actually rather just crash this thing, I think, because then it'll be gone and we won't have to deal with it. So let's end with a crash. It's always good to end with a crash. This should hopefully be a good enough crash. Let's throttle down and save, like I said, just so that in case this crashes my game, because sometimes stuff, for whatever reason, if it has a communications device on it, if it crashes, sometimes it actually causes my game to crash as well. I'm going to extend this thing, too, just to, to look cooler. Let's turn that off. Get into some sort of spin on the way down, why not? Just to add a little interest. There we go. How high did that end up going from that little burn? Pretty decently high. Almost 11 kilometers. Got another nice view of the Mun. Let's see where we'll end up crashing. I don't... We're not going to make it back to that crater, I'll tell you that much. Where's... Can we see Kerbin from here? We should be able to, right? Yep, there she is. Looking all cool. 
it is preferable to destroy this stuff because otherwise my calm relay thingy is just going to be ridiculous. My little list of antennas that I can connect to. Let's go ahead and time warp a little bit though because it's taking a little while. Oh, but that ruined my spin. Let's get our spin back. Go, little probe. Kind of looks like it has a face. Like a little owl or something. It's got a really big nose though. Alright, I think that's about as quick as it's going to spin, unfortunately, because I don't have any thrusters, it's just its own torque. Come on. So it's our actual uh, altitude, about two and a half kilometers. I'm not going to do time warp here, because I just kind of want to let whatever happens, happens. Fortunately, we're falling kind of straight down, too, so there's probably not going to be a lot of glancing blows that send parts, like, off into suborbital trajectories here. I think everything's going to more or less blow up. NASA does this sort of stuff all the time, I'm sure. Yeah, that pretty much took care of that. Well, cool. So, we collected a bunch of science. I can probably go unlock some parts. Let's uh, actually quick save. Well, I'm not going to quick bother quick saving. Let's go ahead. Let's go back to the Space Center because we'll probably update my auto save here automatically. Because I've been crashing a lot when I try to go into the science building. Because it loads all the textures, I think. So, we have 249 science. That should be enough to unlock some stuff, I would think. How much does this stuff cost? 106. So, we'll be able to get one thing, at least. Let's see. We got some big old shuttle engines. Some crazy decouplers that I'll probably end up getting deleting the parts anyway. That thing is what I was talking about. The Oscar B fuel tank. I need that. And the little RCS tank, too, would be good to have. For satellites and probes and whatnot. So those are all things to keep in mind. Uh, this is a bunch of larger stuff, it looks like. The skipper engine would be good to have as well. It's so hard to choose. Everything, <laughs> everything is good. Uh, we got thruster blocks. Weird command pod. That'll probably end up deleting as well. The Mark II command pod. That would be... And the lander can... We need that lander can for landering, because I'd like to send some people out to these at some point. Ooh, but docking, we kind of need docking too. I think what I'll probably end up doing is I'm going to buy the uh, lander can right now, and then I'm going to launch a couple more missions off screen here, and we'll uh, get the docking stuff. And then we can launch a manned mission. Um, probably go to. We're probably gonna send an unmanned mission out to Minmus first, but I think we'll do that in the next episode. So thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.